that for the first time in human history, for the first time in all of human history, almost all of mankind is politically awake. And these new and old major powers face still yet another novel reality, in some respects unprecedented. And it is that while the lethality, the lethality of their power is greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at a historical low. I once put it rather pungently, and I was flattered that the British Foreign Secretary repeated this as follows. Namely, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people, literally. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. It is easier to kill than to control. And um, interestingly, this is, this is very relevant to current events. In his books and, and his statements, Brzezinski, who's very much, uh, like I say, running the foreign policy of Obama with people like Kissinger, he talks about an area of the world called Eurasia, which is basically from Europe across to China. Now, this is the most significant part of Eurasia on this map. What Brzezinski says, control Eurasia, you control the world. Not least because of the uh, massive oil and gas reserves around the Caspian Sea. So we're in a, a process of the cabal wanting to take over Eurasia, and particularly this area. Now look, the number of countries that have been invaded, had regime change, or are now currently being targeted. First of all, the Ukraine. They, they use things to get the people going, like a color revolution or a flower revolution. So this was the orange revolution. It was funded and orchestrated by the networks of George Soros, and it put their man in there. They had the rose revolution in um, uh, Georgia, where they put their guy in there. Uh, they tried to get a green revolution after the last election in Iran, but it didn't stick. They have Iraq, they've taken that over. If they take Syria, then they're all the way through to Israel. They've, they've, they're in Afghanistan. They're now undermining Pakistan and bombing Pakistan more and more. In Kyrgyzstan, we had the Tulip Revolution. We just had another one recently, putting their people um, into power. We've had the terrorism starting to unfold in India. And they are targeting these areas because they not only want to take it over, they want to trigger a war involving China and Russia the Third World War that their documents have talked about for a long time. And they're ticking them off. And if you take that map of Eurasia and keep it in your pocket, you'll tick them off as the news stories unfold. Oh, a revolution here. Oh, a coup here. And what they're doing, this is not America doing this. It's not America doing this. This is the cabal doing this through America. The idea is to destroy America, to use America, to destroy America. Why? Because when you want a world government dictatorship, you cannot have any superpowers that have the military and financial might to say no to what you're saying must happen. Because the uh, world government, it tends to have a world army, a, a world central bank, and a world currency, eventually. And they'll manipulate the financial situation to, to bring that about, or try to. So what they need to do to take the superpower America out is they need to destroy it militarily and they need to destroy it financially. And that's what they're doing. They're using it on their foreign excursions and they're undermining its economy to destroy America. And it is going down the pan so fast. And this guy is being used as the front man. Nice smile. Oh, he's a nice man. That's what's really happening. <laughs> Behind the smile just handed on. It wasn't change. There we go. Here's the ball. Make sure you keep the drugs running in Afghanistan, you know, drop some my way. And what we saw was a presidential problem reaction solution. Bush was brought in to create problems, financial problems, overseas wars problems, and this guy was brought in as the solution to the problems. And as Adolf Hitler said, the great masses of the people will more easily fall victims to the big lie than the small one. So, I am someone to believe in. Hope, which is always in the future, never in the now. And uh, so it never actually comes to fruition, but we can hope it does. 
And then you had change you can believe in. And none of these trite phrases like change were ever described in detail about what they actually meant. And what they created was a massive mind control coup on vast tracts of American people because they made Obama a blank screen, an empty suit on which people could project what they felt hope and change was, their version of it onto him. And once he became uh, president, of course, everything was changed. Make the lie big, make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. I love you, you love me, I will get you stuff for free. Oh, yay, Obama, you are such a star. I love this one. The wolf found that Shepard's clothing worked better. The peace president, first thing he did was agree the uh, bombing of Pakistan. Same guy, all this going on with this spent uranium, depleted uranium. What does he do? Continues the bombing, increases the troops. Fraud, another puppet. Golden rule, big time. Ignore the words and watch the actions because they're never the same. And just to show you nothing's changed, there we go. Good old Bono. Nothing's changed, we're fine. So, we have this projected agenda and we're now at the point where they're trying to introduce finally that structure. World government, world central bank, world army, a world currency eventually and alongside it of course the Orwellian state that I've been writing about for the best part of 20 years and uh, increasingly uh, so many others have too over the years and it's unfolding uh, as daily experience. Sudden the same lie could be told again. Look at the 